The process to redraw Alabama's congressional district maps is underway. A public hearing was held today and soon state lawmakers will convene a special session of the legislature to come up with a final proposal. All this the results of a ruling from the U.S. Supreme Court that said Alabama's current district lines violate the U.S. Constitution. The high court says the state needs two majority black districts, not just one, in order to better reflect the overall population. WSFA 12 News political reporter Aaron Davis is live tonight and Aaron, you were at today's public hearing. What's the latest? Mark, lawmakers on the reapportionment committee did not adopt a map to present during the special legislative session, but the options were narrowed down to four maps. Hey folks, Dale Jackson here for Yellowhammer Now, and I know this is complex, but the people you just heard talking from WSFA uh, down in Mobile are wrong. I can't make it any clearer than that. They are wrong, as is most of the national media. There is no direct order from the Supreme Court or from a three-panel, a three-judge panel that says the Alabama legislature has to create two minority majority districts, i.e. two black districts, i.e. two Democrat districts. Well, now that the Alabama legislature has met and moved forward a, a series of maps on redistricting, we have a bunch of people who are both upset and stupid. And you'll see that's a dangerous combination. Tonight, a Supreme Court stunner. Two conservative justices, Chief Justice John Roberts and Brett Kavanaugh, joined the court's liberals in striking down Alabama's congressional map that critics said diluted the power of black voters. In a 5-4 to four decision, the court upheld a lower court ruling that found a redistricting map drawn by the Republican-led Alabama legislature violated the Voting Rights Act because it only drew one district out of seven that had a majority of black voters, even though more than one in four Alabamians are black. Today's ruling will have immediate impacts. Another congressional district in Alabama with a majority black population and more. This is going to have an impact far beyond um, Alabama and will have an impact on who controls the United States House of Representatives after the 2024 election. Already today, the Cook Political Report, which handicaps elections, changed its ratings for five House races, moving each one towards the Democrats and saying that today's ruling will send shockwaves right across the country. Well, tonight, a major victory in the U.S. Supreme Court for the Voting Rights Act, which prohibits racial discrimination in voting. In a 5-4 to four decision, the justices struck down Alabama's Republican-drawn congressional map, which only included one majority black district, despite more than one quarter of the state's population being black. The ruling means Alabama will have to redraw its congressional map to include a second majority black district. The opinion was written by Chief Justice John Roberts. Conservative Justice Brett Kavanaugh also joined the court's three liberal justices in the ruling. Lester, a real surprise, especially given the court's past decisions and one with potentially big implications for 2024 as the high court today reaffirmed the key part of the Voting Rights Act aimed at preventing race discrimination. Now, the 5-4 decision with Chief Justice John Roberts writing for the majority sided with those voting rights advocates who'd argued Alabama lawmakers had drawn their congressional maps in a way that diluted the power of black voters to elect the candidates of their choice by cramming them all into just a single district. That's a move that caused the Chief Justice and Justice Kavanaugh to side with the court's more liberal members and break with their conservative colleagues. Now, the upshot of this decision is that Alabama will now have to redo the map for the next election, but the case could also bolster challenges over gerrymandering we see in other red states, and those are ongoing. Last there was no court order from anyone that said do a majority and minority district, a second one. There wasn't. And what this map did was it got closer to a majority-minority district in House District 2, which Barry Moore represents, and it had to take some voters, black voters, from Terry Sewell's district. So that went from like 55 or 57 to, to 51. Okay, if that's not enough, sorry, but 42% minority in Barry Moore's district makes that district more competitive, up from about 30-something percent. And I predict, as I've been told, this isn't my thought, that there will be maybe some moving of the lines and a couple percentage points bumping up here and there. So maybe we'll see more of this. Now, people will complain because they saw this as an opportunity to get another Democrat seat. That's all this is about. This is not about what's right. This is not about the Voting Rights Act. This is not about democracy or anything like this. This is about Democrats saying, hey, maybe we can pick up a seat. And Republicans going, hmm. 
not so fast. Uh, maybe you won't be able to, to pick up a seat. Maybe you will actually lose all, all seven of them because that's a possibility now too. And wouldn't that be beautiful?